is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note. This is a 5.3 inch Android smartphone, and it's got about the best specs you can find on a smartphone, including some impressive things like a Wacom Dual Digitizer. You can use an active stylus with this, not a capacitive stylus, and you can use a touchscreen as well. And it has a 1280 by 800 resolution display. Now, obviously, it's big. I, I don't have a small head. I'm 5 foot 10 inches tall, so I'm not a teeny little lady, and you can see the size. A little case of side talk in here, but it's manageable. If you've used a Dell Streak 5, for example, hey, you're used to this already. So this is the famous Galaxy Note. This is only available from importers right now. It's available in Europe. Uh, Korea is getting an LTE version as well. But here in the U.S., no carrier has picked it up, at least not yet. Now, of course, it's recently passed through the FCC with AT&T bands, but guess what? The original import version already has AT&T, 3G, 4G, HSPA+, 21 megabit per second bands, 850 and 1900 megahertz bands, that is, as well as overseas bands, so it's hard to say what FCC means. Even this guy has an FCC label on the inside, because pretty much everything does go through there. But we do hope that carriers pick this up. Certainly AT&T would be a great candidate, since it's already got those bands on it. And it would be really neat to see an LTE version, though HSPA plus speeds on this have been quite good. As you said, it, it's a big phone. If you thought the Titan was big, well, you can see this relative to my fairly large hand. It, this is even bigger. It's very thin, though. You know Samsung. They make things thin and they make things light. It's incredibly thin. It doesn't feel like as bulky a piece as the Dell Streak 5 did, for example. You can see the usual power button on this side. That's what Samsung always does. You kind of got a gloss, smoky chrome finish here. Here's your headphone jack up top, microphone hole. We spin it around. Notice how the glass sticks up a little bit. It makes it look a little bit more elegant and nice. We've got volume controls here. Micro USB at the bottom, another mic hole, and this is where your pen lives. And this is an active digitizer pen. It's like a little baby Wacom pen with Samsung on the head of it over here. And it feels pretty good in the hand, too, for a small stylus. And it works pretty well. I actually tried a full-size Wacom pen with this, and it worked, but it didn't work as well as responsively. So I really, if you're into drawing and painting, you probably do actually want to stick with this little guy. Now on the front here we have backlit capacitive buttons as you can see just disappeared on us. There's the back button, this is your standard menu button, and this is the home key which is actually a clicky pressy button. Interesting, don't know why that is, but I actually find it easy to use and pleasant enough and tactile certainly, so that's fine. Your earpiece is up here, here's your fun video chat camera, works great with Skype and with Google Talk, we tested it and Really nice quality, and it's a pretty neat experience to see whoever you're talking to in a video chat on a screen this large. On the back we have the usual Galaxy S2 family 8 megapixel camera here with an LED flash. Takes very good pictures in 1080p video. Again, it's going to be a lot like the Galaxy S2 in terms of the quality that you see. And here's your speaker. Moderately loud, not super duper loud. For a phone this big, you think they might have gotten a bigger speaker in there. So remove the back. Typical of Samsung phones, this very thin piece of plastic, the whole thing just pops off, SIM card slot. It has a micro SD card slot right here. You obviously have to pull the battery to get it out of the way to insert and remove a card. This does have 16 gigs of internal storage though, so you won't be running immediately to your SD card for basic storage needs. And you can see here a 2500 milliamp battery. That's a lot of battery power. Of course, this has a big screen, and it has a dual-core 1.4 GHz Samsung Exynos CPU. Currently, boy, that's the darling of CPUs because it's very fast, and that's the fastest clock speed yet, so very fast phone. It's an absolutely gorgeous Super AMOLED HD display, Samsung calls it, and even the lock screen, look at that. It's always a delay when you hit the power button, by the way. It, look at that, that's just so darn pretty, right? And this is just one of the standard bundle images here that we have in the background. Absolutely scrumptious looking. Bright, vivid, colorful, better color calibration versus the other Samsung Galaxy S2 phones, say the one on AT&T and even my Skyrocket, which has a significant blue color cast. Seems like the folks at Samsung worked a little harder with this, and they actually cal cal calibrated it, so whites are much closer to white than we've ever seen on any kind of Super AMOLED display. Again, the resolution on this phone is... 1280 by 800 pixels. That's higher than the iPad 2, and that's the same resolution as 10-inch Android Honeycomb tablets. So we're talking exquisite sharp detail here, because that's packed into 5.3 inches diagonally. Ebook reading, you, I looked with a magnifying glass on slanted letters like a W, and boy, you really just can't see the jaggies on that. 
super duper and fantastic, obviously for viewing photos, even this desktop photo here and for watching videos. And the interesting thing is we looked at the 720p IPS display on the LG Nitro HT, the same thing on the HTC Resound, also 720p, and even the Galaxy Nexus. And they look nice, but it didn't really jump out at me in the same way as being so much better than QHD displays. But this, the minute you look at it, you say, okay, this is something special. Between the relatively neutral colors, the incredible contrast, the super deep colors, and the sharpness, this, this is definitely in a different class of devices. Of course, the price you're paying for that is, this is quite expensive through importers, it's around $700, and it's also a relatively large phone. How large is it? Take a look next to the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket. The Skyrocket looks a little bit dimmer because we don't have it set to high brightness right now. If we change that, you can see it should be fairly comparable with brightness. And there you have it. But size-wise, see if you if you thought that the 4.5 inch Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket ATT was a little bit big, well, you're talking even larger here. In terms of thinness, well. They're both skinny phones. And here we have it next to the HTC Titan, about which we made jokes about. It certainly is a titanically large phone, 4.7 inches, and mm, it doesn't look so big anymore, does it, next to the Samsung Galaxy Note. Here we have it next to our absolutely petite iPhone 4S, 3.5 inch display, so obviously lots, lots smaller, more pocketable. In terms of thickness, uh, the Samsung really holds its own, being very thin. And lastly, we have it next to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus. This is a 7-inch tablet, so you get the idea that you're getting close to that, but it's still obviously much more portable. So for those of you who don't want to carry around two things, a smartphone and a 7-inch tablet, well, this just might work. Of course, you need to either have roomy pockets, baggy pants, a purse, or a purse. So what do you get with the Galaxy Note? Obviously, the 5.3-inch Super AMOLED HD display, that 1.4 gigahertz dual-core Samsung Exynos CPU with graphics acceleration, 16 gigs of internal storage, front video chat camera, rear 8 megapixel main camera with LED flash autofocus, and Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, Bluetooth, and a GPS, plus support for Russian satellite GPS technology, so this guy really locks onto GPS and does very well. It runs Android OS 2.3.6 Gingerbread. Out of the box, it came with 2.3.5, and it immediately requested permission to update itself to 2.3.6. And Samsung has said it will get ice cream sandwich. In fact, at some trade shows, they have demoed it running ice cream sandwich, and boy, it really works well because there's such nice pen support. Also standard is that dual digitizer. This is your standard Samsung capacitive-looking display, ostensibly at first, but it also works with this pen. You can just use it to navigate around the device if you like, and more importantly, you can use it to draw. And with applications that actually support Samsung's SDK that they've made available, you can draw with pressure sensitivity. It may be big, but it's obviously still a phone, and you see we've got the phone application right here. Giant dialing screen, and your usual access, call, log, contacts, favorites, and groups. And all your call features, uh, Bluetooth headsets very well, Bluetooth car kits we tested, very good. Call quality on this has been very good. Just like the Samsung Galaxy S2 line on GSM carriers, very nice outgoing and incoming voice quality, full, clear, good volume too. The only challenge might be if you have a smaller head, the distance from here to here, make sure, getting this lined up at your ear and getting the, the microphone lined up at your mouth could be a problem. I haven't had a problem with it yet, but... Well, if you do, that's what Bluetooth headsets for, or smaller phones. In terms of software, you've got the latest, greatest version of TouchWiz on here. Now, I never used to be a huge TouchWiz fan, but I like what they've done with it with the latest iteration. It, you no longer get ugly icons. You get your standard icons right here. You can control the organizational method. In fact, something that's pretty neat is you can even create things like folders. You can see I have one for ebook readers, games, drawing, all that kind of stuff. And you've got your strip here of perma-launch applications as well. And you get all sorts of really nice Samsung widgets, which include things like, well, they've got actually a special widget here just for their S-Memo app, which is their drawing and writing application. And anything that you draw or make, you can tag right there on the home screen. They've got awesome calendar. This is their S-Planner, which is kind of like the calendar on steroids, very visually pleasing, works with multiple calendars, does color coding and all that kind of stuff.
the usual bundle of the AccuWeather widget and their social networking, their social hub widget here, which I actually like quite well. And you can tap through on any URL that you see here, you pull up a picture or website, that kind of stuff, and links to the full version of their application. That's just the standard AP News stuff and stock widget right there. So there's lots of good stuff here, and it's an infinite carousel. You keep going around. You don't reach the end and have to come back and scroll through seven of your home screens again. And one thing I really like that Samsung does with TouchWiz is you have quick access to your wireless radios here as well as silent mode and controlling whether or not the screen rotates and any notifications will show up down here and this just happens to be my little weather bug weather notification that's listed there right now. Like the rest of the Galaxy S2 line, this also supports motion control. You can pan by putting two fingers on the display and tilting it around if you like. You can, If you want to move icons around your desktop, you can tilt the phone while holding an icon instead of having to try to drag it along and you can turn it over to silence it when it's playing media. In terms of speed, yeah, it's very fast. Even though it's driving a whole lot of pixels, usually the higher resolution of the display, the, the slower the device does on synthetic benchmarks and sometimes feels experientially a little bit less fast. This guy manages 4100 on Quadrant, whoa, does almost 6500 on Tutu benchmark and for the SunSpider JavaScript test, we clocked in at 1920, where lower numbers are better, and very few phones actually do that well. That's very fast JavaScript rendering. And to give you an idea with Quadrant, phones like the Atrix 2 score about 2200, so we're talking almost twice as fast on synthetic benchmarks, at least, for this. Does it actually feel fast? Yeah, it feels fast. In terms of data speeds on AT&T's network, obviously we're using this with ATT SIM and we have HSPA Plus service in this area. You can see the benchmark speeds that we've gotten and typical of AT&T in our area, they're miraculously affected by things like rain. You can see the rainy days and rainy periods of weather right there in the lower speeds, but overall we've been getting pretty good speeds. This is about as good as it gets, getting near 6 megabit per second for down and about 1 up in the Dallas area for us. So, yeah, you're not getting LTE here, but you're getting very fast speeds. Certainly web, web pages load quickly, and this also has the mobile hotspot feature. Now, if, if I was you, I'd make sure you actually are paying for that feature with AT&T, because I hear they're policing folks and sending little nasty warning text messages that they're going to upgrade your plan if you don't. But as long as you have that on your plan, you won't get nagged, and you can use this as a mobile hotspot. And we did that, and we averaged about 5.5 megabit down, and 1.8 up when we use this as a mobile hotspot for a laptop computer. In terms of software, you obviously get no carrier bloatware because this is an unlocked GSM phone. It doesn't have any bloatware whatsoever. You do get all the standard Samsung staples. We've got their DLNA all share. We have keys and keys air for syncing media files. We've got their readers hub, which is kind of cool. We'll take a look at that now. And we've seen this before on some import products and some tablets, and you've got press display newspapers, you've got books powered by Kobo, and we've got Zinio here. And we're going to take a look at Zinio. Now, I really think that a 10-inch, around 10-inch tablet is just about right for viewing magazines with Zinio, but it's, it's surprisingly readable and pleasant. So I'll just pick something. So here we are in National Geographic. Uh, I would say, given that print page orientation is portrait, I would stick with that too, because otherwise you will get facing pages with this, and things are a little bit teeny, but super gorgeous looking. And small, but readable. Of course, Zinio has some features to, to make things more readable, but so you get an idea of what it looks like in the speed. It's great. And there's pinch zooming, and that's very fast for Zinio, which isn't always the super duper fastest app on Android. And if you want to see an article, you can tap through and go straight to the article. That fast, very good performance. Samsung includes actually a pretty full-featured photo editor and a, a video maker too. We'll take a look at the photo editor real quick here because it's pretty nifty. So you can select a picture and we will just pick something. And then you've got tools for cropping, for various effects. You can copy and paste, you can fill, you can create frames, you can do warping. Contrast, brightness, saturation, auto-fixing, changing the color temperature, handy if it doesn't get the, the white balance correct in a shot that you're taking, particularly indoor shots where sometimes you can get a yellow color cast with this camera. Vintage sepia kind of looks, grayscale the image, all sorts of stuff like that. So that's pretty neat for a mobile image editor. 
and we've got their video editor here and you see you can choose from a variety of potentially useful types of video formats home video, party travel, movie, conference, that kind of stuff and we're just going to go with movie and then you pick the media that you want to add to it so to work with the media of your choice you just actually drag it down to your bin right here so we want to put this one in as well and then you can actually add a soundtrack still images so we'll pick Yo-Yo Ma and you can see that that's been added on so it's pretty sophisticated again for a smartphone now we've picked our clips and our music, we hit done so we have this interface we can actually play or you can do other fancy things, you can do trim, splits you can add a dissolve or a fade I think a dissolve would be nice right there and you can hit play there we go and this is kind of long so we'll just, you actually grab this to move it along, pause it and you can do it like so, so we'll move it right before our transition and you can add text and stuff like that too along with photos and there's our fade and there's our home movie clip of the crazy cat so that's the included movie maker, neat stuff and we've got even more Samsung apps too, we've got the Music Hub as well there is no Media Hub here, that's their, their movie video rental stuff but that's probably because it's an international version and it's not offered in all countries overseas we've got their usual mini diary, fun little diary application Polaris Office is here, this is an MS Office viewer, this is not a editor as well but you can download, purchase and download the MS Office suite with editing capabilities of your choice as well Twitter and Facebook are preloaded on this and that's about it for Samsung's own applications except for the really cool pen application right here and here you can see that the drawings, some of them are preloaded over here, you can do things just make little post-it notes for yourself, actually do drawing and painting you can throw down copied images which is kinda handy, so say you grab a map over there and you want to write yourself some directions that works just fine and here's a picture of a parrot that I was working on and so you can see the tools when you tap on it, it opens it in edit mode right here and you can see I have a selection of various tool types, pencils, magic markers, pen, painting, colors available over here and you can see here's the drawing tools right here, we've got a pen brush, pencil, and magic marker and you've got a color picker see here too, so you're not limited to just these kind of not always very realistic colors, so say I want to draw in kind of muted earth tone brown right there and pay attention to the color on the slider here, it's the most accurate by the way this slider controls how wide or narrow your line is going to be so now that I pick that, tap over here and we're going to touch up the bird's chest a little bit fill them in with a little shadow of brown that kind of thing, now, not the best artistic choice there but you can see how it works and then this does have pressure sensitivity if I press hard it gets thicker and if I trail off it gets lighter and that's easier to see if we choose something fatter like that press hard and it gets wider and fatter so that's pretty neat and then you've got the handy dandy eraser tool here and a text tool as well undo redo and if you don't want to say what you've done you can hit cancel so it works well for that kind of thing, and you can just use it for writing your grocery list out too, or taking notes in class or at work. Now this does have palm rejection and knuckle rejection, but a lot, like a lot of Windows PC slates, what you want to do is you want to put the pen down first, and then you can rest your hand to your heart's content. And you see it's not vectoring. If I don't do that, if I rest my knuckle, you tend to get a lot of weird vectoring going on. Well, that's actually managing pretty well right now, but in some applications you will have problems. So that's S Memo, and there are other applications too that work with the SDK for this pen, and they're available in Samsung's S Choice application store. Now, they're actually all the apps so far have been free, so you don't have to pay for them, but 
You can see right here they're featuring Sketch, which is a, an Evernote product, and that obviously works with the pen. We've got Omni Sketch, a low colored pencil. These support the pressure sensitivity and all that kind of thing, too. So that's kind of neat. You can check in here and see what might have been added for pressure sensitivity. Now we did download a couple of applications. For example, let's look at Hello Colored Pencil. So this is a pretty neat and simple app. It's very child friendly too. You can see you can change your background color. That's what I did. You've got fill colors here. You can choose the size of your pencil. You can switch to medium. And actually we just switched to magic marker there and you can pick your color that you want to work with. And just start drawing. And again pressure sensitivity a little bit there, a very light line, it's very faint. And whenever you want to bring up the tools again you just tap over here. So that's free. There's Hello Chalk, Hello Colored Pencil, and Hello Crayon that are available. Now we have a PDF loader. We're just using Adobe Reader which is a free download from the market. And you can see, boy it's really beautiful, right? This big screen, excellent for that kind of thing. So say you're reading a PDF and you want to remember something. You, right now, there, there are two applications that are supposed to come out that will actually support annotating directly on PDFs. But for right now, what you can do is, anywhere you want, is take a screenshot. Just use the pen, hold down, hear that little shutter sound. And it saves it, and you can go ahead and mark on this to your heart's content, which is pretty handy. Likewise, you can do this by capturing web pages, anything that you want to do. Just like that. So, pretty good stuff. Can't wait to see what comes with Ice Cream Sandwich, which has much wider pen support in the operating system itself. Probably a lot of new features are going to be available. So the web browser is the usual Android WebKit web browser with Adobe Flash. We're up to 11 right now. And there's uh, the usual Samsung customizations here. You can see that we've got their little standard UI over here, quick access to your bookmarks, uh, multiple windows, that kind of stuff. There's a couple of new things here. For example, if you if you use Samsung phones, you know that they have independent brightness for the browser right here. And you've also got color level for power saving as option for options, which is interesting. So now we're loading the New York Times. This is the full New York Times homepage, not the mobile version. And we're doing this over AT&T's HSPA Plus network. Flash ads and all running. And the resolution is such that you almost feel like you're looking at a tablet here. This is one place where Samsung's giant text doesn't take effect. So fonts are pretty small, but because the screen is so sharp, they're pretty readable. Of course, you can tap in and make things even more readable, and it's very fluid. Now, this is a heavyweight page, and you can see how easily it's doing that. Very nice. Adobe Flash in the browser, no problem for playback as well. We'll check that out by visiting our own site. Good page load times. All flash ads loading and but not slowing it down. And we'll check out our Galaxy Nexus video review to see flash playing in the browser. Volume level's not bad. So, absolutely smooth playback. And the controls work pretty easily there. Often it's a little bit of a struggle to get that to pop out the full screen like that. But still streaming this over AT&T's network, by the way. That's looking great, man. YouTube videos that huge are really sweet. Of course, you can use the mobile YouTube player, which these days serves very high-quality videos as well. Obviously, one of the big attractions for this product is ebook reading. You've got a big screen here. You don't have to turn the page every two seconds. And we have Nook, Kindle, and Aldeco all loaded. They work fine. We're going to take a look at Nook right now. We're going to look at one of the Nook books. And there you see, there's our controls right there for setting font size and 
I've set it pretty small because it's very clear and I've set wide margins and fairly aggressive line spacing and you can see the neat graphics here but how fast that is really nice and smooth and if you zoom in really close to the screen you can see that the fonts are just very sharp they're on the gallery application and they have some high quality images loaded here you can see how quickly they load and how gorgeous the screen looks those super better than life colors from Samsung very fluid and very easy to use so let's test out some video playback now first here's a DivX clip Samsung loves to do DivX support so we've got a DivX, DivX clip loaded right here It's a whole new experience in watching videos on your smartphone, isn't it? The screen is big and beautiful. Now we're making it work even harder. We've got a 1080p video playing. Superbly sharp and beautiful looking. Don't worry, the slow-mo is actually the clip intentional right now. It's going to play smoothly. And this does work with MHL adapters, so you can plug this in via HDMI to your HDTV or monitor. And to finish off multimedia, here we are in Netflix. I just downloaded Netflix off the market, and it gave me this lovely tablet-like view. And we'll just pick one of the movies that it's featuring here. So here we are in our movie. Super nice blacks, very deep blacks, better than life color, typical of Samsung phones, and playing very smoothly and very large. <laughs> Battery life on the phone has been reasonably good. If you keep it cranked to the highest brightness, which certainly isn't necessary, that, that'll, that'll kill the battery pretty quickly. But otherwise, on HSPA Plus, uh, 4G or faux 4G, whatever you like to think of it as, which isn't as demanding as LTE, despite the large screen and the fast CPU, it, the 2500 milliamp battery, which is really a huge battery, really has good staying power. I managed to make it through the day with moderate to heavy use of the phone, so that's, that's quite good. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Note. It's available now from importers for about 700 bucks. We certainly hope this will be coming to a U.S. carrier. It looks like AT&T might be getting it. Definitely an awesome phone. Stunning, super duper lovely display on this. Very fast. If you've got large pockets in the, the monetary and in the physical sense, well, it, certainly this is one of the best phones on the market right now. I'd call this one Lisa's Christmas toy. I just love it. But it, it is a big phone. If that's not something you're comfortable with, then that's not so good. But if you're looking to not have to carry a tablet around, plus a smartphone, for example, then, boy, it's really hard to beat the Samsung Galaxy Note. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website to read the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.